now the introduction to java the uh, java is as we know that it is a extended version of a c++ language okay c language was a base so the logic of the c java c++ are all the same only the grammar of the language changes right the grammar of the language differs from c to c++ and c++ to java okay c is a basic language which is where it is built uh, c play where c++ is built on a c language because c the name itself c++ right that is a plus plus is a increment operator in c and as well as a c++ right so the extended version of a c is a c++ then the java is a extended version of a c++ c the c is a procedure oriented program and c++ is a the it supports object oriented program and it also supports a procedure oriented program so we call that c++ is a extended conventional language we call it okay now whereas the extended version of a c++ is a java programming okay java is a pure object oriented programming right it does not support any procedure oriented program it is purely the object oriented program where the grammar of the java programming is going to work only on the, the objects and the classes okay now so when we say that java is a pure object oriented program we must understand the the basic concepts of a uh, object oriented programming that is a uh, the base properties of a uh, object oriented program the properties of an object oriented program before proceeding to the java programming language the basic co concepts of object oriented programming is say object class there are nine properties of the object oriented programming concepts first one is object second one is a class third one is data abstraction fourth is data hiding data encapsulation right message passing dynamic binding polymorphism okay and uh, the next is uh, the uh, inheritance okay so this is uh, about the the uh, we can say that it is uh, about the the ob concepts of object oriented program so we will study the very important uh, part of the object oriented programming that is a concepts of object oriented programming is that is about the the objects classes inheritance data hiding polymorphism data encapsulation data abstraction right then the message passing and uh, the dynamic binding okay these are all the the concepts of the the object oriented program because we before proceeding to the java we must understand how this java is going to support all these features of the the object oriented programming concept okay now so we'll study the different uh, uh, that is uh, the object oriented programming concepts first one is we call as i told the object so okay so now so objects are the basic run time entities we can say okay or object oriented program so these uh, as we people we are familiar with the variables right what do you mean by variables so variable is a one which is going to change its value during the execution of the program is called as a the variable okay so this object is a basic unit of the object oriented programming or in simple we can call this object is an runtime entity okay and or you can call it is a class variable okay 
so when we are going to i told that object oriented one of the feature or one of the concept is a class so when we are going to use a class right that class is is uh, contains uh, as I, we have discussed in the previous section that access specifies private section data public section data and the protected section of the data right now you are uh, uh, there are some uh, data members and member functions in a class so what do you mean by class class is a user defined data type which allows the user to define the both member functions as well as the the data members that is a it is a class is a extension of a structures right where in structures all the members are by default they are public whereas in class since uh, it is a feature of object oriented programming it supports the the private section of the data by declaring some of the variables under the private section of the data that we call it as a data hiding or data security right so when we want to access these members say for example we are it uh, class allows the user to declare variables as well as the functions so variable uh, uh, which we are going to declare and the class is called as a data member and the variable which you are going to declare um, function which you are going to declare under class is called as a member function okay now the so when we want to access these member functions and the data members outside the class we have to say that this particular member function or the data member or bees belongs to this class right so when we want to access when we want to access the member functions for execution for invoking or when we want to assign some values or when we want to access the values variables data or the data members of a class we use a objects so okay that is called as a struct class variable so you people are familiar in the structure that is a structure variable right what is the purpose of creating the structure variable under the struct heading it is it is going to use for accessing the members of its class members of the structure right similarly in classes also when we want to access the data members or the member functions we want to declare the objects these objects are used to invoke the or to access the member functions and the data members that is both data and methods so in java we never call the functions as a member functions we call them as a the data mem uh, sorry methods right so that is both data and methods that operate on data are bundled as a unit it is called as a object so whenever we are going to create a one object that always uh, holds the data of a member function as well as the the uh, data member values and the member functions as we have discussed that the sharing of the memory or allocation of the memory space in for a object is the each object will have its own uh, space for the data members right but objects are going to share the member functions that means what i want to say is say for example you have created four objects right and four variables are there all the four variables will have a separate memory allocation for each object listen carefully right and member functions uh, all the four objects are going to share the member functions okay that is a one memory space is created for all, uh, each member function and that member that member function is going to share with all the four objects but there will be a separate memory location for each data member in a, for each object okay now it is we can call it is a real time entity example say a person book tables chairs etc we call that this is a this is called as the the object okay 
so it is a runtime entity or we can call it is a it is also called as a they may represent a person the object may represent a person or a place or a bank account or a table of data or any item that the program has to handle they may also represent user defined data like vectors time and list so when a program is executed the objects interact by sending messages to one another okay so that means what i want to say is in terms of objects and nature of communication between them program objects have be chosen such that they match closely with the real world objects as i told they take up the memory memory space and have an associated address like a record in the structure and in the pascal okay the objects can interact having to know the details for each other's data and or code it is sufficient to know the type of the message accepted and the type of the response returned by the object different authors are going to represent them in a different way notations okay so we call that is uh, the two uh, objects customer object may send a message to the account object requesting the bank balance right for example if we have a bank database the bank database will have the account number okay and the uh, balance of an account holder and name of a account holder right suppose i am going to create three functions say open account okay deposit amount and withdrawal amount finally display okay so i am creating only one object to access all these member functions this object is going to communicate with each member function okay so opening balance so it is going to accept from the open account and that opening balance is going to be send it to the fair the deposit amount function in turn whatever the amount we are going to uh, deposit that is going to be added with the current balance that communication is done through the objects okay now the and the withdraw say for example after depositing the amount there will be a some balance amount right that object is going to communicate with the withdraw function so this is what the current balance of the account holder in turn when the a customer is going to withdraw the money then the withdraw function will have two conditions one condition is that so when the user is going to enter some amount it is going to test whether that amount is exceeds the current balance or that uh, it allows the user to withdraw the money so what is the condition if the withdraw man amount is greater than the current balance it is going to give the message you cannot withdraw because your current balance is uh, lesser than whatever you are withdrawing right the other option is suppose uh, the user has given the withdraw amount less than the current balance that time it allows the user to uh, withdraw the money and that withdraw money will be deducted or subtracted from the current balance of the open account then the rest of the amount will be uh, saved as a open balance amount and that balance amount is going to communicate with a display function to display what is the current balance of the the account holder okay for example say your uh, opening balance is 10000 you are depositing the amount is equal to 5000 So, what is the total amount? Your current balance will be ten plus fifteen. Fifteen thousand ten five ten plus five will be the fifteen thousand. Then, when you are going to withdraw a twenty thousand amount, then it will give the message you cannot withdraw the money because the current balance is fifteen thousand, and your withdraw money is more than that. Okay. So, other condition is suppose the user is going to uh, opening balance. So the current balance is fifteen thousand. When you draw, withdraw the amount of five thousand, then it allows the user to withdraw money because the current balance is more than what the withdrawn money. So in that way, 
the objects are going to communicate with each member function of its own class. Okay, that is the duty of the, the object. Now, the other second uh, is uh, the class. So, that is another concept of the object oriented programming. Second concept will be the class. So, class plays very vital role because the that object contain the data code to manipulate that data. The entire set of data and code of an object can be made a user defined data type with the help of a class. In fact, objects or variables of type class. Once a class has been defined, we can create any number of objects belonging to that class. Each object object is associated with the data of type class with which they are created. So we can define a class is a collection object, collection of objects or class is a collection of instance variables so which all the elements or belongs to the similar kind instance variables and methods when you want to define a class you define a blueprint for an object this does not actually define any data but it does define what the class name means that is what an object of the class will consist of and what operations can be performed on such object okay for example you take the mango right apple orange okay then our members of the class fruit okay classes are user defined data type and we have like a built-in data types in a programming concept okay the syntax used to create an object is no different than the syntax used to create an integer object okay so it has been defined that the statement fruit mango will create an object mango belonging to the class fruit. Okay. Until the time uh, that is on the until when until we are going to declare that the fruit is a class and mango is an object. So you can create any number of objects of the fruit class. So I can create orange. I can create uh, uh, banana like that. Okay. Now. Uh, so that is what an object of the class will consist of and what operations can be performed on such object. Then next property is the data abstraction, data hiding, data encapsulation. This all comes under the class itself. Okay. Why I am telling is the date, the uh, object oriented programming allows the user to define both class and the functions in a single unit called as a class. The wrapping of up both the things in a single class we call it as a data encapsulation. The wrapping up of the data and functions into a single unit it is called as a data encapsulation. Data encapsulation is the most striking feature of a class. Data is not accessible to the outside the world and only the functions which are de defined and declared in the same class can access it. These functions provide the interface between the objects of the data and the program. This ins insulation of the data from the uh, direct ac access by the program is called as a data hiding or it is also called as an information hiding. I can tell you the property which is called as a data hiding property. Okay. Data hiding that is a sum of the variables which you are going to declare under the class declaration. Okay. That is called as a data hiding property. Sum of the variables which you are going to declare under the private section of the class. It is called as a data hiding property okay data encapsulation is a single in a single unit of class we are going to allow the uh, uh, both declaration of the the data members as well as the member functions it is called as a data encapsulation come to the data abstraction so data abstraction refers to the act of representing the essential features without including the background details or the explanations that means the outside world and hiding their background details 
represent the needed information in the program without presenting the details for example a database system hides certain details of how data is stored and created and maintained similarly c++ classes provide different methods to the outside world without giving it internal details about those methods and data so okay that property we call it as a data abstraction for example to take a list of abstract attributes like size weight and cost and the functions operate on these attributes they encapsulate all the essential properties of the object that are to be created the attributes are sometimes called as a data members as i told the variables or the attributes we call it as a data members because they hold the information they contain the data the functions that operate on these data sometimes called as a methods or they are also called as a member functions in c++ we call them as a member functions whereas in java we call them as a methods since the classes use a concept of data abstraction they are also known as abstract data types add we call it as so you understood data encapsulation data abstraction and data hiding don't get confusion data encapsulation is allows the user to declare both uh, data members as well as the methods we call it as a data encapsulation data hiding is declaring the variables and some of the member functions under the private section of the class is called as a data hiding property data abstraction refers to the providing the essential information to the outside world and hiding their background details okay so how we are going to operate the data okay how we are going to create the data how we are going to store the data we will not give that features right only we are going to use uh, uh, create some of the attributes that is the data variables or the data members and we are going to operate on that data using some member functions okay that kind we call it as a data abstraction okay next is a, the property called as a inheritance very very important property because this is this uh, inheritance plays very important role in object oriented concept so one thing i'll tell you there are two kinds of languages one is object based language the other one is object oriented language so what is the difference between the object based and object oriented is the object based language uh, uh, only the objects classes and data hiding property will be there whereas in object oriented programming the object based features plus it supports inheritance and dynamic binding so okay whichever the language whether java or c++ or ifl one more object oriented programming language is called as ifl e i f f e l okay so whichever the language which supports both the the uh, which supports the feature of object based language plus inheritance and the dynamic binding property we call it as a object oriented program that is the reason why i am telling the inheritance plays very very important role in object oriented program one of the most useful aspect of this object oriented programming is reusability so whatever the program you are already written that can be reused once again say so for example i'll tell you inheritance is a process by which objects of one class acquire the properties of the objects of the another class it supports the concept of hierarchical classification for example you take a bird okay so bird will have the attributes it they will have the feathers and they lay the eggs okay and uh, the bird again classified into two one is a flying bird other one is a non flying bird so when you take a non flying bird that will have its own attributes right when you take a non flying bird it is having its own attributes okay but both the birds will have the feathers and they lay the eggs okay then the for example you take a robin is a part of the class which is comes under the flying bird 
which again part of the class called as a bird. The principle behind the sort of division is that derived classes share the common characteristics uh, the, uh, with the class from which it is been derived. He know the concept of inheritance provides the idea of reusability. This means that we can add additional features to an existing class without modifying it. This is possible by deriving a new class from the existing one. The new class will have the combined features of both the classes. The real appeal and power of the inheritance mechanism is that it allows the programmer to reuse a class that is almost but not exactly what he wants and to tailor a class in such a way that it does not introduce any undesirable side effects into the rest of the class. So note that each subclass defines only those features are unique to it. Without the use of the classification, each class would have explicitly include all of its features. Okay, that is about the inheritance. It is very important concept of object since the, this feature helps to reduce the code size. It saves the time, okay? And debugging time it saves, writing the, rewriting the code saves the time, right? And that can program whatever we have that can be extend, extensible, okay? Next property uh, we have, this is a very, very important property called as a polymorphism, okay? Polymorphism is nothing but uh, the important concept of this uh, object-oriented program. Polymorphism, it is a Greek term which means the ability to take more than one form. An operation may exhibit different behavior in different instances. The behavior depends upon the types of the data used by in the operation. For example, Consider the operation of addition of two numbers. The operation will generate a sum. If the operands and strings, then the operation would produce a third string, which is called as a concatenation of the two strings, right? The, suppose if you are going to enter two integer variables, then addition of two integers. If you send a two floating point, then it is addition only, but it is different floating point numbers. Suppose you are adding one float and one int, it is a different variable, right? So we call polymorphism is the one which is going to accept the different parameters for the same function name. So polymorphism plays an important role in allowing the objects to having the different internal structures to share the same external interface. This means that a general class of operations may be accessible in same manner even though specific actions associated with each operation may differ. Polymorphism is extensively used in implementing the inheritance. Say for example, you take a shape, draw. Draw is a method, right? I can use a different uh, drawing. Circle, I can draw a circle, I can draw a rectangle, I can draw a triangle also okay so it is called as a polymorphism so single uh, same function name but a different uh, parameters we are using but we are going to use a different okay this is about the polymorphism okay so normally the polymorphism is also called as a function overloading function overloading means so what we have studied the constructor overloaded same constructor with a different parameters. We call it as a overloaded constructor. Here also, when the same function name with a different parameters, when you are going to use, it is called as a function overloading or it is also called as a function polymorphism. Okay. Because same function name, say you take example sum. Okay. You are going to send the two parameters to integers. Okay. And uh, two uh, floating point numbers or two string or one float and one double or one float and one integer like this okay but function name will be the same different parameters so we call it is a the, the function polymorphism or the function overloading okay polymorphism is also a the another kind of the uh, 
function uh, overloading okay so same function name but with a different set of arguments okay so next another two features we have the dynamic binding and the message passing that i will do in the next class